Many companies build their own custom lifting devices. Why not? You've got great engineers. Nobody knows what you are lifting like you do, right? Plus, it's cheaper. We understand why many companies want to build their own device. Bringing in a third party feels like it is overly complicating something that you already know how to handle. But there are a lot of considerations that need to be taken into account. In this video, we look at homemade below the hook lifting devices and custom developed below the hook lifting devices from an accredited company. So you'll have a full understanding of the pros and cons. My name is Ben and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. We sat down with Dan Sherwood, a below the hook product manager at Mozilla, to find out if building a homemade lifting device is really a good idea. So let's get into it. Some of the companies we come across that have been making their own lifting devices for years, you know, they feel that their internal people have the best understanding of what their practices are, what their applications are, and feel that bringing in an outside company that may not be up to speed with, you know, their processes, the pieces they're picking, you know, may not be able to achieve it in the way, you know, some of their legacy devices and legacy people have the same understanding. You know, so they'll go ahead and kind of internally put something together, or having the pieces and, and process right there that they can kind of tweak as they see fit and come up with um, come up with something that, you know, works for them. You know, there, there's a lot of reasoning why you may not want to be the manufacturer of a device. Um, number one, I would say, is kind of the liability on it. The company takes, you know, full responsibility of that lifting device once they manufacture it, design it in-house. You know, so if an incident or something were to happen, um, and OSHA comes in, they're going to be falling back at this company looking for all of the backup information, you know, material certs, you know, weld procedures followed on it. So there's a lot of information that if a company is making these and they don't, you know, have the good documentation records or they don't, you know, have some of these procedures or, or knowledge in place, um, you know, they could kind of find themselves, um, you know, in a tight spot. If a company's having, you know, one of their engineers or something design it and that engineer is not fully comfortable with understanding the standards and they, you know, they kind of put a piece out there, something were to happen. Not only would that company find themselves in, in some, you know, legal ramifications, but even that engineer personally could find, you know, themselves facing some sort of repercussions, um, you know, to putting that out without the proper knowledge. You know, we really recommend if, if they're, you know, if a company is going to uh, go out and, and make lifting devices that, you know, they have somebody in-house that fully understands all the standards, what all the engineering needs to be, you know, behind the, the lifting devices, you know, and then on top of that, just make sure, you know, they have, you know, the proper insurance and coverages to cover them, you know, if, if some type of uh, an incident were to happen with that piece that they, they manufactured. Where Mazella comes in is we have engineers that actually sit on the committees that write the standards that we have to follow. And then not only that, you know, we have, you know, all the appropriate insurances and everything to be able to provide you with a device that is certified, that is backed by professional engineers, backed by you know the standards, it will meet every OSHA requirement to a lifting device. We cannot certify anything that a customer makes because really what our certification is, is it's our company stamp saying that we've designed, we've engineered, we've fabricated, you know, this device to meet or exceed all of the ASME standards. What they need is they need their device tagged and brought up to the ASME standards. And a lot of times that can only happen by rebuilding the device, you know, with the proper engineering, with the proper fabrication behind it. As a company stance and as a lot of companies out there who do daily dealings in below the hook, you'll find that nobody's willing to repair or alter a lifting device that has not been manufactured by one of the main below the hook manufacturers out there on the market. What that really boils down to is, is once somebody goes in and repairs something or alters something, they're taking full liability over of that device. For somebody to be willing to take over the liability on that device, they need to be certain that the device was designed and truly meets all of the ASME standards 
And what we find a lot with homemade lifting devices is that's, that's not the case. In situations like that, we would typically recommend a full-on replacement of that device. So when you purchase a uh, engineered lifting device, um, it's going to come with all the appropriate tagging on it that meets the B3020. It's going to have all the engineering behind it that meets the uh, ASME BTH-1. There's a really good chance it will have been load tested as long as you know the company making it has the capacities to load test and what the device is. So it'll come with you know not only that but the load test certificate. But the, the device is going to come and it's going to have all the appropriate warning markings on it. It's going to have all the appropriate tagging on it. It's going to be designed specifically to uh, do the application that it uh, it's intended to do. There have been a lot of customers that we've gone into that, you know, for years have made their own devices, used their own devices. And our goal is not to come in and shut down the operation. Our goal is, you know, if we come into a situation like that, we're going to point out to you where we feel the critical pieces are that need immediate attention. Just because it doesn't meet standard doesn't mean we don't feel that it's adequate to do what it's doing, where it won't present more risk in that situation. And then there's times we come in and we look at this and, and we feel that this is an immediate danger type situation where you know what you have is not correct, is not right, and it poses a potential risk for an immediate failure type situation. For something like that, we may make the strong recommendation that you need to immediately pull that out of service. However, we are not the, the OSHA police or the standards police where we state this has to be pulled out of service or else. In, in the meantime, you know, if we can get you guys slings or other, you know, in stock lifting applications to help you get by while we go through, you know, an expedited manufacturing process to get you a correct device in, um, that would be one avenue to help from shutting down your plant completely. If you're using or building your own lifting device, you really need to have a full understanding of all the standards that your device needs to comply with. And you need to make sure that should an accident happen, you have the proper insurance to cover that device. If you aren't sure your device is 100% compliant or that your insurance covers it, then you could have a major lawsuit sitting in your shop waiting to happen. Or at the very least, an OSHA violation. Mozilla can help get your lifting devices OSHA compliant. We offer inspections and build custom devices to your specification. Contact our lifting and rigging division if you need to get your devices up to code. I hope after watching this video, you understand the benefits of purchasing a custom engineered below the hook lifting device from an accredited company. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, Drop it in the comments so we can get you an answer. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.